All right, everybody, welcome to the 5 p.m. regularly scheduled meeting of the Housing Authority of the County of Monterey on Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Uh, let's stall, start, excuse me, uh, with a roll call, please. Tori or Gabby, can one of you uh, start with the roll call, please? Sure. Uh, Chair Wizard. Present. Chair Booter. Vice Chair Booter. Present. Commissioner Healy. Present. Commissioner Ballesteros. Present. Commissioner Gama. Present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner Goodwin. Present. We have a quorum. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Ballesteros, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, okay. If everyone, if you're able to stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, Indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thanks so much. Uh, at this time, we'll move to public comment. Any member of the public wishing to give comments to the Board of Commissioners on items not agendized on this evening's agenda, uh, now is your opportunity to speak. Um, if you would like to make comments under any of the items listed on the agenda, please wait until that agenda item is brought forward. Uh, you'll have uh, three minutes to make your comment. Is there anybody in the public who would like to offer those comments now? No. Okay. I will, as I've done in last in the past meetings, leave that uh, sort of in suspense in case someone comes in a little bit late, uh, and we will for the benefit of uh, the meeting's management, move to item 4A, a service award presented to Adriana de los Santos for 20 years of service to the Housing Authority. Tori, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm having internet issues. So uh, we are thrilled to present this uh, certificate of service to Adriana de los Santos uh, for 20 years of service. Um, I don't know if I saw her present or not. Are you here, Adriana? Hi, Tori. Yes. Hey, congratulations. Um, and uh, we will get you this as well as a pin. Uh, do you have any words that you'd like to say? Um, I just want to say thank you. I feel very fortunate and honored to be able to serve our community. And it's, again, it's been an honor working alongside all of my colleagues. So thank you. And I'd like to thank the board um, for what they do. Um, and thank you, Tori. Thank you. I'd like to invite any of the commissioners to give any remarks. Um, Congratulations, 20 years of service is very admirable and we appreciate everything that you do, so thank you. Adriana, thank you very much for um, committing 20 years of service and um, we appreciate your dedication to the Housing Authority, thank you. Yeah, it's a huge accomplishment and um, you know, I think it's evident uh, from some of our interactions that you care deeply about the housing authority and you know, 20 years of service is remarkable. So thank you for that. Yeah, I will just uh, echo everyone else's comments. It really is uh, an incredible feat to give so much of your time and, and so many years of dedication to not just any one employer, but the housing authority here and all of the wonderful work it does to serve these, these families and these communities. Uh, it really is something to celebrate. So thank you for all of your hard work and dedication over these many years 
um, to the betterment of our community. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, Gabby, just checking in with you to make sure no one has, has showed up to the meeting looking to give us some public comment. They have not. Okay, we will move to the consent agenda. Items 5A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, 5A is a resolution 3056, which is again our continuance to meet virtually uh, under Assembly Bill 361. Uh, item B is the approval of the minutes of the special board meeting on May 16th, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. Uh, 5C is the approval of the minutes of the special board meeting held on May 16th, 2022 at 3 p.m. Item 5D is the approval of the minutes of the special board meeting held on May 16th at 4.30 p.m. Item 5E is approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting on April 15th, 2022. And item 5F is approval of the minutes of the special board meeting held on April 12th, 2022. Is there any question from the board about items 5A through F on the consent agenda? Or would anybody like to poll anyone out or multiple of those items? Hearing and seeing no one, I will uh, go out to anybody not a commissioner and ask if they would like to poll any items uh, on the consent agenda, items 5A through F. No one on the line. Hearing and seeing no one, we will come back to the Board of Commissioners for uh, a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Uh, it's been Goodwin. moved by. Goodwin. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Goodwin. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller to adopt items 5A through F, the consent agenda, and seconded by Commissioner Goodwin. Uh, roll call vote, please. Uh, Chair Wizard. Chair Wizard. I vote aye. Vice Chair Booter. Yes. Commissioner Healy. Also yes. Commissioner Ballesteros. Yes. Commissioner Gama. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we will now move to items, uh, item six, the reports of committees. Uh, Commissioner Ballesteros, do you have a report from personnel? We didn't have a personnel committee um, this month due to um, all the, um, the dates that we were meeting for the, uh, that's listed as the, um, for the different board, special board meetings we had. So we didn't have a committee. Okay. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gama, do you have a report from finance and development? We also didn't have a meeting this month. Outstanding, thank you for a very brief report. Uh, Commissioner Miller or Commissioner Goodwin, any reports from Michi or Michi TAA? Um, I could not attend the meeting. I was still out of the, uh, on my cruise. So I don't know if Francine was able to attend or not, sir. I attended. Okay. Anything uh, to report out? Not really, no. Okay. Well, with that, we will close item six and move to item seven A, the executive secretary's report. Uh, thank you. So today uh, was the first day that we officially reopened our lobby in the central office and reopened for business. Um, however, we can continue to have uh, COVID protocols, temperature checks, uh, questionnaires that are completed for everyone who enters the building. Um, and we've had positive feedback. Earlier, we had opened the break room uh, the playgrounds, most of the community rooms and on-site offices. Um, we are still working on 100% compliance with that, um, but we are, for all intents and purposes, uh, we are reopened to the public. Um, and I'm sure that there will be issues that we will continue 
uh, to have to adjust to and respond to. Um, but uh, the, the early reports are it's going okay. Um, uh, we also, uh, again, last month we had received extra admin fees uh, due to a year-end reconciliation. And this month uh, we received an additional 124,000, uh, which is always appreciated. Um, I also applied for and was accepted uh, for the HACM membership with the Community Homeless Solutions uh, membership. Uh, I'm a, a member of that board and we had done a substantial bylaws expanding the membership and it also caused everyone to need to reapply for membership. Uh, so I reapplied so that we will still be at the table with the continuum of care and with uh, CHS on discussions and strategies for ending homelessness. Um, I had a number of uh, meetings and discussions and many emails uh, regarding the future of Pueblo del Mar. Uh, we are pursuing some alternative funding from the county uh, and I will keep you abreast uh, of that if anything comes about. Um, and then uh, the last two items, uh, the settlement uh, was fully executed and all of the funds received uh, for a settlement with uh, Haciendas 1 and 2. Um, and this was with regards to the, the premature rusting of a lot of the metal that was installed on those properties. Uh, so that, that matter is now officially closed. Um, and another matter that's closed is the easement amendment that was approved by the board uh, has finally been recorded with the Big Sur Land Trust uh, and the county. So that uh, transaction is done. And that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Wonderful, thank you. Any questions for Tori? All right, hearing and seeing none, we will move to item 8A, resolution 3057, establishing a new procurement policy. Tori, take it away. Yeah, so commissioners, I uh, found a copy of the procurement policy um, that was approved and being used by HACM. Um, and it had most recently been approved by the board in January of 2010. Um, since that time, there have been a number of significant changes. The, the biggest change uh, was 24 CFR 8536 was eliminated and housing authorities were directed to follow 2 CFR part 200. Um, and so <clears throat> I went through a process of updating uh, the policy so that it would be in compliance with 2 CFR part 200. Um, and the, the, the biggest changes are a number of new sections uh, and I've outlined them in the, in the memo. Um, but procurement planning, micro purchases, selection process, a multi step bid process, the independent cost estimate, uh, disposition of surplus property, and exclusions uh, were all new sections that needed to be added to the policy. Um, many of the existing sections that uh, were not new sections uh, didn't have to be substantially changed. Um, some of them were slightly modified, but really the, the goal was to create a policy that was in compliance with current HUD regulations. Um, and I've done that. I think the, the thing for the board to know is um, this is a solid procurement policy in compliance with the regulations. Um, however, it is also a conservative policy because Hackham no longer has any public housing, um, there is the ability to take a more liberal approach to a procurement policy. Um, I did not do that in this draft. Um, I've talked to a number of other housing authorities uh, that also did por portfolio conversions to see if anyone has really taken this approach. Uh, and the closest example I could find was San Diego. Um, but because the city of San Diego has so many rules uh, that are 
specific to San Diego, um, they didn't, I wouldn't characterize their policy as a liberal policy. Um, so in the future, I think there is an opportunity for Hackam um, to continue to modify the procurement policy, but this policy uh, is in compliance um, and I would recommend its adoption. Thank you for that overview, Tori. Do you have any, uh, excuse me, do any commissioners have any questions for Tori? All right, hearing and seeing none. Um, Gabby, any members of the public join us so far? No. All right, we'll come back to the board. Any comments or concerns about this revised procurement policy? Okay, what is the will of the board? I'll make a motion for approval. Second that motion. <clears throat> it has been properly moved by Commissioner Miller and seconded by Vice Chair Booter to adopt item 8A resolution 3057, establishing a new procurement policy. A roll call vote, please. Chair Wizard. Aye. Vice Chair Booter. Yes. Commissioner Healy. Aye. Commissioner Ballesteros. Yes. Commissioner Gama. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Motion carries. Right. Wonderful work, everybody. Uh, item 8B, Resolution 3058, a contract amendment between Hackham and Factory Consulting, LLC. Tori. So uh, this is my firm um, and my contract expires uh, May 30th, 2022. Um, I think given where we are at during the search process, uh, it's unlikely um, that you would have a, a full-time executive director on site by May 30th, 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so what this contract does is provide you, the board, maximum flexibility. Uh, so it includes an extension uh, not to exceed another 150,000, uh, which would include any reimbursable costs like travel. Um, and in the, in the draft, I've extended it to 1231 um, to give the board and the new executive director the option of uh, using me for special projects um, if needed. Uh, and it's also perfectly acceptable that if the board hires someone and the board and the new executive director uh, don't need any additional services, um, I'm, I'm happy to have the contract terminated. Um, so I think uh, happy to answer questions uh, right now, I am uh, significantly under budget on the current contract, uh, but this is really just kind of a, a safety belt and suspenders approach to, to give the board time uh, to find the right candidate. All right, thanks very much. Questions from the board? And I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, my... Um... <clears throat> My question was, um, is there a amendment drafted somewhere at this point, or is this sort of just direction to draft it? Uh, there is an amendment direct, uh, drafted that we can certainly forward to you. Uh, it was drafted by outside counsel. Got it. Um, <clears throat> Any other questions? So it's essentially really oh. just increasing the cap, Tori, or just um, in terms of the, it sounds like maybe it allows for some uh, more flexibility and scope if we hire a full-time executive director to potentially 
um, use you as a consultant? Is that sort of a fair summary? Yeah. So it, I mean, it, it does three things. One, it, it increases the cap uh, and the current cap is at 150. Uh, and second, it changes the end date. The, the current contract had an end date of May 30th. And then third, it adds the flexibility uh, to be used in a flexible way. Um, the current contract was uh, very directive in terms of the number of weeks that I would be on site and, and what I would be doing. Is it, um, uh, but the fundamentals of the, the original contract, are there any, um, aside from those provisions, are there other modifications that would be um, put into place by the amendment? There are not. All right, I'm going to go out to the public to see if there's any questions or comments. Gabby, anybody with us? No one on the line. Okay, well, then we'll come back to the board. Any final questions or uh, comments about this uh, proposed revised contract? Okay. Hearing none, what is the will of the board? I'd uh, go ahead and move approval of the amendment to the contract. I make second. It's been properly moved by Commissioner Healy and seconded by Commissioner Ballesteros to adopt resolution 3058, a contract amendment between Hackham and Factory Consulting LLC, which is agenda item 8B. A roll call vote, please. Uh, Chair Wizard? Aye. Vice Chair Booter? Yes. Commissioner Healy? Yes. Commissioner Ballesteros? Yes. Commissioner Gama? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Motion carries. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, moving now to item 9A. Uh, a discussion on client interactions and providing great customer service. Tori. Yeah, so uh, this item was added uh, at the request of a commissioner um, who I think had observed some uh, email interactions. Uh, and this is uh, a posted item to be able to give the board the opportunity to discuss uh, what do they want to see at the Housing Authority in terms of customer service, um, realizing that everything is a, a balance and everything is, you know, many of these client interactions have multiple sides, um, but I think the, the Housing Authority uh, would love to have the board weigh in on what its view of how we treat customers, how our clients are viewed, um, and, and how we should go forward. Um, to, to put it bluntly, do we want to be more like a stereotypical DMV uh, or more like um, a Whole Foods or some other example of good customer service? Yeah, and you know, I think we've had, um, <clears throat> obviously, when you're dealing with hundreds and thousands of people, um, there are gonna be things that bubble up. And I also appreciate that, you know, um, in any large group of people, there's, there's gonna be challenging personalities and, uh, you know, to put it mildly. So I appreciate the folks on the front line who are handling those things. And I think it's tough to have somebody come in after the fact and and kind of wrap you on the wrists and say, oh, you didn't handle that, you know, really aggressive person in the right way. The thing I would say, though, is we've certainly had a few folks reach out about um, being treated in a way where they feel like they're dealing with a bureaucracy and it's pretty clear that it's sort of driving them crazy. Um, and, you know, there, there are some indicators that potentially, you um, you know, we could, we could stand to improve our customer service and, and build a culture around that. And, 
you know, we talk a lot about how this is all about the clients and, you know, providing affordable housing and, um, you know, meeting the needs of, of folks in the community. And I think there's no better way to do that and embody that than just, you know, it doesn't cost us anything, right? How, how we interact with the folks that come in, um, you know, needing our help. And so, you know, I think that it's, I think it's important for us to provide direction as a board that there's a certain standard um, uh, in the way that we want to interact with every client, you know, even clients that are being difficult. Um, and, and I think that's important. The comments, Commissioner? Um, uh, I wanted to yeah, say something, Mr. Wizard. Um, Please, go right ahead. Yeah, I know sometimes, you know, we were not there at the time when, the, when an employee is dealing with a client. Sometimes clients, you know, can be very uh, challenging. And I think as long as, you know, the agency continues, you know, to provide training or maybe the supervisor step in, Maybe um, they develop a system where the supervisor can come in or maybe a senior employee come in and help that employee. Sometimes it takes a second person, you know, and it's not saying that that employee wasn't able to help the client. As I said, clients sometimes can be challenging or maybe they're not understanding the communication. So I think us as a board can continue to support our employees and just, you know, I'm pretty sure that the agency does have policies in place when they're interacting with um, the clients. And um, I think too, that we continue to support the employees and also including the clients and clients are very important. We may not know their situation or how they feel or what they, whatever is being communicated or provided to them, they may not understand. So they just probably need, um, additional uh, communication, you know, an explanation. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, this was an incident where um, uh, I think, you know, there was, there was someone who, you know, felt like they had been taken off a waiting list, you know, inappropriately. And in the course of the, um, the email chain, there were a couple references to, you know, this is my second spell of homelessness, etc. And, you know, the email that went back, in addition to us, like, in the first pass, one of the reasons she was mad was that there was a letter sent out to her that uh, it literally listed, like, check boxes of all these different reasons why you could be taken off a waiting list, and it, the page was completely blank, right? So she got a blank you know, statement of why you're being taken off this waiting list and was frustrated with that. And then, um, you know, I, I just felt like the emails that went back, um, you know, rather than sort of the tone of them was very much like I felt like someone was standing there at the DMV and, you know, pulling their hair out. And, and that kind of felt like that was sort of the tone of, um, you know, what was going on. Um, and And by the way, you know, we miss the fact that, hey, this woman is raising her hand and saying, hey, I'm homeless. And I have no independent verification of what exactly um, the background on that was. But, um, you know, what I would really like for us to see, and obviously could be a simple oversight, but I'd love for us to make sure that we have the care in going through those types of communications. And that we, we say, look, this person's raised their hand and said they're really in trouble and they're homeless. And can we provide the appropriate referrals, you know, et cetera. Um, so I really wanna make sure that we have the right culture to make sure that we're taking the time to find those kinds of details and provide that kind of support. Chair, may I comment? Please, go ahead. Um, thank you, Hans. I think you put that exactly the way that we need to be operating there. Trust me, I get dealing with difficult people. I spent a career doing it, um, and but we have to remember what our true purpose is. And I know we say that that we're there, you know, to provide it, but uh, we need to be able to step up and do that. And if someone becomes that difficult, maybe slide them over to someone else and see whether or not that person can make a connection and get those people the answers that they need, 
and um, for us to be able to provide the services that it appears that this client was in, in dire need of. So um, thank you. Any other uh, any other commissioners like to share on this topic? Um, I'd like to say something. Um, just uh, on the on the side of um, I guess the uh, employees. Um, I I know they have a really tough job, and um, I I live in a, in one of the housing complexes and. Honestly, there's a there's a, a mix of some bad attitudes in here, and um, and I know that Monica does her best to try and comply, you know, with of course the housing regulations, but also you know to make sure that you know our needs are met, um, whether it be a noisy neighbor or you know uh, something to that nature, but. Um, but I, I know there's a lot of complaints, but um, but not all of them are um, are merited. And um, anyway, I, I think overall, from what I've experienced from most of the um, at least our managers here, um, they I think they do their best. And so I kind of you know want to give a shout out for them as well because it's not an easy job. That's it. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Anyone else like to comment? All right. I don't hear or see anyone else looking for recognition. So, Thank you, um, in the spirit of Adriana has her hand up for a public comment. Yes, in the spirit of ensuring that we have a robust uh, and participative. Uh, public body. I want to make sure that we give the opportunity for members of the public to comment. Uh, I see Adriana, uh, you have your hand up. Uh, you have uh, three minutes to share your thoughts with us if you'd like. Yes, thank you. Um, I cannot comment on the situation that occurred, um, but I do want to comment that um, I, think, I believe it's important that, or at least I try to um, not only be professional, but also have that compassion and empathy um, towards the clients. And um, so I, I agree with um, what is being said. And um, so I just want to mention that. And I hope that, um, oh, and I'm also, I agree that any type of training, um, we, we can always there's always room for improvement for all of us. So that's also a great idea. And I thank you for your support. Thank you very much, Andrea. Any other comments or questions? Gabby, is there anybody else on the line? No. Okay, we'll come back to the board. Uh, thank you again for those comments, Adriana. Um, any other uh, commissioners wishing to uh, come back to their comments or to offer comments for the first time. Tori has his hand up. Please, uh, Tori, go ahead. So I, I do think um, that there is room for improvement or at least setting a standard of what the board expects in terms of customer service. Um, customer service can be kind of nebulous um, and I think it would be helpful uh, for the housing authority if, if we had direction of, you know, either A, uh, we think that the customer service that the housing authority provides is generally fine, don't make any changes, or we think the housing authority is fine, we'd like you to be better and uh, focus on customer service. Um, the, the truth of the matter is um, there are always things that need improvement and it's a question of priority setting. And so I, I think the housing authority would find it helpful if the board provided direction to say, we want you to spend some money or some time on improving customer service um, or we're happy with the level of customer service. You're doing a great job. 
don't change anything. Uh, thanks very much, Tori. I agree. I think that it is our role as the commissioners to help shape some policy decisions for you as the executive director and for you to do uh, your best to implement those as the as the board desires. And, uh, you know, I think I'm finding some difficulty and I don't know if uh, other commissioners are experiencing that as well, but um, sort of a starting point. You know, I, I hesitate to you know, offer a suggestion if it's something you're already doing. And uh, I just don't necessarily have a great framework or grasp of the current policies and procedures and whether my input would be helpful or repetitive or something we no longer do because we found out it doesn't work. So uh, I'll just put that out there for uh, the moment because I see Commissioner Miller's hand is up. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I mean, we have to realize that any organization can improve, especially with training. And um, I know I've used in the past, you know, brought in people to do customer service training. Um, because all of us have a chance to improve. I, I think overall, my opinion, uh, the Housing Authority does a good job. Uh, the employees of the Housing Authority do a good job. There's always gonna be incidents. I realize that, but also think maybe bringing in some training just to reinforce um, that, you know, true real customer service, just not answering questions, but actually truly serving people um, isn't a bad thing. and. Uh, I think that most employees would probably benefit from it. I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but sometimes it's nice to just have things reinforced and you know, take a look at the fact that, hey, am I doing it the way I should be doing it or not doing it and everything else. So I would not be uh, opposed to spending some money if uh, the administration thinks they can find someone to come in and kind of just help reinforce um, the customer service uh, policies that we do have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Hi, I think Susanna. that's, uh, please go ahead. Yes, so I have a question. Is this something the personnel committee can look into? And then I feel like bringing in somebody personally might cost more than looking into a program where employees can just do their training once a year and it's more like a video. Um, I don't know, that's just food for thought. Um, Cause I have heard Customer service going both ways with the housing authority. I work in the community and I help my patients out in the community. And some of them are homeless. Some of them say, I don't even want to apply for the housing authority. And it's just that stigma of either the wait list is too long or they get rude customer service. So sometimes I also have to take that with a grain of salt because some of my patients are not mentally stable. And I don't know if those statements are true. But that's also something to look at. I'm not sure if that's something the personnel committee can look into, or if even if it's appropriate for them. Thank you for asking that. I, I appreciate that. Um, I see Commissioner Miller has his hand up again, uh, unless that's a stale hand. Sorry, it was a stale hand, sir. I just took it down. <laughs> no, no sweat. All good. Um, so I guess you know just to. Um, kind of tuck into the conversation we're having here. I'm, I'm hearing two different approaches, one being to retain some uh, consultancy um, and help us sort of think through the programs and policies we've got now and identify where we can make those improvements. And then the other side I'm hearing is uh, to contract with uh, a customer service a training organization to offer uh, training um, as opposed to more of um, um, a review of the, the way that we have it operating now, but I don't know that those necessarily have to be different or separate. So I wanna go to Commissioner Booter. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's pretty hard for us as um, commissioners to have a real handle on, um, you know, what those interactions look like on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I think we see sort of a, you know, the outliers perhaps. And, um, you know, I'm always a sucker for data. Um, you know, I know that not everyone would be into this, but 
you know, long term, I think there's a lot of areas in this organization where if we had some data as a board, it would be helpful, you know, whether it's a, uh, a sampling of quick surveys, you know, one out of every five people who has an interaction on the phone or something, and then we, we hit you with a quick survey. Um, and hey, how did that interaction go? How did you, how did the person at the other end of the line make you feel? Um, we'd probably have a, a little bit of a better, you know, sense of um, how things are going. Uh, obviously, I would, you know, look to Tori because he's, you know, had some day to day experience of, um, you know, some of that. So obviously, we can rely on the executive director as well. It sounds like he thinks that, you know, there is some, there's some work that we could potentially do. So I'm in favor of it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of the uh, discussion, I appreciate that it was fruitful and kind of explored a couple of things in terms of kind of applying it and seeing where we go from here. Uh, Tori, do you have any uh, input on sort of the different but parallel approaches you heard from the board? I mean, I, I think I have uh, enough feedback to be able to formulate a, a game plan. I think um, it, it is in an area that there isn't any data. So, you know, I think generally speaking, both as an executive director and as commissioners, we tend to hear from folks who have a complaint and we tend not to hear from folks who had a great interaction. Um, that's much more rare that they reach out and say, hey, we want to let you know they did a great job. Um, so we, we tend to have a, a bias towards the type of feedback that we get. Um, I do think it is worth looking at the standards and I'm, I'm not sure if there are standards that exist. Um, you know, is, is it an agency expectation that all emails and voicemails are returned within one business day? You know, is, is that a fair expectation? Um, but I, I don't think that we necessarily have a standard of com customer service. And so I think that's, that's where I'll start is to kind of see, um, do we have either policies or guidelines that set an expectation? And if we don't, I think that's a good place to start. And perhaps either with some internal or external training. Okay. So why don't we plan on this? Uh, Tori, what is an appropriate amount of time for you to come up with at least a draft of a game plan in order to report back to us about your progress? Is it 30 days, 60 days? Uh, yeah, probably 60 days. Okay, so why don't we tentatively set for uh, the agenda um, July, uh, the July meeting, where you'll give us a status update. Uh, if, you're, if you're done with sort of the, the meat and potatoes of the game plan, great. Uh, but if it's still a work in progress, we can uh, figure out a future date to uh, have it come back in a more uh, a more final form. That sounds fair. Okay, very good. I appreciate that discussion. Thank you, everyone. Um, we will close that item um, and move to item 10A, uh, B and C, the Human Resources Development and Property Management and Housing Programs Reports. Uh, so I'll be handling uh, the HR report. Um, Tamberlin uh, Creighton, our new HR director, had a, a personal emergency. Um, so in, unless it's Shion, she, no, okay. She thought she might be able to join, but it wasn't clear. Um, so uh, you can see we've, we've gone back uh, and she had looked at the performance measures uh, in prior reports. Uh, and have provided some status updates. Um, I think the, the high level um, is we are looking uh, at customer satisfaction, um, client uh, employee satisfaction. And uh, one of the things we'll be rolling out is a employee satisfaction form um, to kind of give us a, a current uh, check-in on the, the pulse of the agency how people are doing. It's been a rough uh, two years, certainly, uh, but even more than just the last two years, there has been a lot of uh, change uh, at the top um, and that can be unsettling to folks. And so we're trying to take a pulse uh, and provide a baseline 
uh, that then can be used to be repeated uh, in future years uh, when hopefully there is more stability um, to be able to, to see. Uh, we are also looking at uh, some company-wide uh, reward programs and incentive programs, um, not big dollars, uh, but just something to be able to recognize um, good work or exceptional work uh, by people or by departments. Um, and then in the uh, new hires, uh, so Tamberlin, we've already reported, and then Mahir Patel uh, was hired as a finance specialist too. Um, so that is helping um, to fill up the rest of the finance department. Um, and as a reminder, we currently still have the director of finance uh, the director of property management, the procurement and contract manager, a housing navigator, and an executive director position are open. Um, I did um, make a, a, an appointment of a interim director of finance. Um, Kimberly Shehorn uh, has really stepped up in this period and has been the de facto interim director. Uh, so we went ahead and uh, made that official. Uh, which helps with some of the up and down reporting, uh, but it's also a recognition of the, the extra work that she has taken on in addition to her duties um, in the absence of a, a permanent director of finance. Uh, and so that'll conclude my personnel report. Great, thank you. Our next report, Development and Property Management. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'll just add a, a quick review of the main projects we're working on right now. Staff and I are reviewing a number of capital improvement requests that we've gotten for some of our LP developments. Uh, we're working with our property management companies on that. Um, over at One Parkside, we've got Building A. Building A is nearing completion, the community center. We had all the modules delivered for that building. Uh, building B has been done. We're just waiting on pg and &E so we can do the final punch and energize the building. And uh, building C, we've got the first and second floors completely done. Last week on uh, Wednesday, we had to demobilize the crane because there were um, issues with the trucking company transporting the modules from Idaho. So we're gonna start that up again on June 1st. And we should be done with all the module setting by the 10th of June. So we've started our um, weekly lease up meetings with property management so that we can have files uh, ready for our folks that were out on temporary reload to um, lease up building B initially. And the city has already agreed that we'll be able to get a certificate of occupancy one building at a time. So our lender was happy to hear about that. Um, over on Casanova, we finished all of the repairs. Our lender came on site and conducted their inspection. Um, so that's going well uh, and that's done. Um, Tynan, we've got building B finally finished. We've got the scaffold that's been, I'm not sure if any of you have driven by, but the scaffold's completely down and the building looks great. Uh, building C, we should be done within the next two weeks. So that scaffold will finally be down as well. And then the only remaining building that still has some demo and framing repairs is um, building A. And um, that I'll just provide an update again next month. Hopefully, you know, we'll get a lot of the, we'll finish up the demolition by the end of this month. And by next board meeting, I hope to, to have some paint and stucco up on that building. Um, the other item, I did attend a City of Salinas housing forum last week. The city uh, talked about, you know, some developer opportunities, some funding that's, that's available for us. So we're working on an RFQ response and a couple other um, opportunities for development uh, that we'll be working with the city. And, and I'll gladly report back once I have those meetings uh, with them. Okay. I'm not sure if Jose wants to add anything on, on the other sites. Yeah, I just want to add that we also completed um, CCRC inspections on May 18. Everything went well. 
We also have a CREA inspection for Castroville. Um, we have to send uh, uh, reports, uh, preliminary reports uh, to HTC on May 25th. So we're working on that. Uh, we finally received uh, our last impending uh, OCAF uh, for East Salina, I mean for Salinas Family Wrap. Um, and we are going to be getting also the closeout letter for uh, the tax credit audit for East Salinas um, by uh, mid uh, next month. Um, on the uh, one Parkside project, as Carolina mentioned, we're starting a process for the lease up. Um, I got to sit down with Kim um, to set up the property. We had to uh, make sure that we create the buildings, the units, uh, and that we do all the mapping for uh, the future uh, lease up. And then I got to also get together with Maria so that we can coordinate um, with her staff because uh, all the units are going to be PVV. So we need to start working on those um, interviews uh, and also uh, be able to have the paperwork completed in a timely manner and uh, notify the residents because they, they are temporarily relocated, but they have to give notice at their current addresses um, so that we can move them on time. So we got to work on a timeline and I got to work with uh, Maria's department and Kim's uh, department to get that uh, in place so that we can uh, do the lease up. And um, we also uh, wanted to let the board know for King City Migrant, we are working with the state. Uh, we uh, received, we received uh, some direction from the state as far as how they want the project for the rehab for uh, King City done. We've been having weekly meetings with them. We already have the um, RFP. Uh, it's being approved by the state. And as soon as it is approved, it will be um, uh, advertise and then as soon as we get the bids we'll start the selection process which we'll need to get together with Tori for that process um, and then uh, we'll make a selection because the project needs to be completed by June 2023. We also attended a tax credit uh, a training uh, last week and uh, tax credit notified us that um, the spectrum reporting contract is now in place and that we have to be submitting the demographic reports to tax credit uh, by September. So we'll be working on that. And they also notify us that uh, starting in 2023, they want all tax credit files in electronic format. So we, um, we are going to be using a, a scanner that the Section 8 uh, department had purchased um, to be able to do the scanning of those files. It's uh, gonna be a massive project. And we are gonna be working on that in the coming months. And um, that's all I needed to add. And uh, Jose, if I can just add, uh, we also had the elevator go down at Parkside um, and that has been repaired, correct? Um, it, it's on the process. Um, oh, sorry, what happened yeah. is the, uh, someone vandalized the elevator. They, they destroyed the wiring. And because the wiring on the elevator is so outdated, so old, they can't find a schematics to be able to reconnect all the wires. So they're gonna have to do a whole uh, rewiring of the elevator and they have to order some parts. Unfortunately, those parts are on back order and um, we haven't been able to, the elevator company hasn't been able to get those parts. They were supposed to get them today and start work tomorrow, but they had uh, another delay. So they promised that they probably will start working on the elevator on Wednesday. Um, fortunately, the elevators we can't touch. It has to be an elevator company, um, and and it's because of the parts that are by quarter, and and they were having such a hard time finding the schematics. We've been in touch with uh, uh, the city and other uh, entities like the veterans, um, because obviously the residents need uh, the use of the elevator. Uh, we've explored other options to try to mitigate uh, the the impact on the residents, but we were even considering installing a temporary ramp, uh, but anything over 48 inches is gonna require a permit and it's going to be very, very expensive. Uh, and, and we are trying to explore anything that we can do to try to minimize the impact on the residents. Unfortunately, our hands are tied until the elevator company is able to repair it. But um, that is ongoing and, and, and uh, we're trying to provide assistance to the residents. We've, Ask them if they need immediate assistance to contact, contact our on-call or the caretaker, and then can assist them with either 
taking their groceries or uh, you know taking their trash out. There's really very limited options we have on that situation. Um, but if everything that we can do, it's done. Um, we're just waiting on the elevator company. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 10C, housing programs. Um, yes, good evening. Um, I just want to let the board know, um, we did close our waiting list last week on Friday. Um, for Nuevo, I'm gonna say this is the new um, um, project that we um, are getting on board. Also for Rippling River, um, we also, um, um, op opening, well, we're accepting the Moon Gate. Um, as you can see on my board report, there's only three applicants on the list. So we're getting ready to um, get the second round that were selected from the, um, from the lottery. So those applications will be entered as soon as possible. Um, and we still continue to um, accept applications for the larger families, the four and five. We do have some vacancies, so we're really having a difficult try time trying to get families into those units. Um, pretty much uh, my staff is also going to be, we're getting ready to do our inspections. We're just waiting for Yardi because uh, we're having some issues with the letters. So that's ongoing. So hopefully my staff will start doing, going out to do the actual inspections. Um, I also put on here on the utilization, this is per the request from um, Commissioner Booter. I don't know if this is something that he, um, if he has any questions on the budget utilization for the total cost for the program. So I did include it on here if this is something that he would like to see or if it's something different that he um, would like to see on the HCV report. It's on the, I believe that's on yeah. page 64. <clears throat> no, it's helpful. I actually had a question on, I, I think this is the first time I've seen it, but there's actually a success rate um by month for the various you know sub programs and of the voucher program <clears throat> just so i understand that you know they have a uh, i'm trying to remember the, the number of days that we're giving them to um to lease up so for example you know even like what does that mean for example for march does that mean a voucher issued in march has a hundred percent success rate for a mainstream voucher. Um, yes, for um, for example, like for mainstream that you said, we have twenty nine that were awarded to us. So right now we currently have twenty seven leased up, and we did we were going to have another. We're pretty much we're it it changes every day. I mean, it changes um, when we actually give out a voucher for mainstream. So right now we're just having a difficult time because um, we did have, we have four people out on the street with mainstream right now and they've had their voucher for over um, the 120 days and they still cannot lease. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I'm just curious about how that, what exactly we're talking about in terms of success rate. Um, uh, so um, it may be at some point. At some point, you could just send me the spreadsheet and I can just poke around with the formula and just see what we're looking at. Yeah, I could provide you. There is a tool. It's the two-year tool. And um, I'm, I'm working with one of our um, consultants on that because it was not working, but now it is working. And I could send you that report and you'll see how it's broken down by each program. Great. But just keep in mind, um, the HCV falls under housing choice vouchers, um, the special programs, except like VASH, um, family unification. So it, it depends. So it's not going to be by program. It's just under the umbrella of, of HCV for the housing yeah. choice yeah. voucher program. Yeah. But I could send you um, the two-year tool. Great, thank you.
Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, we'll go to item 11A, closed session discussion pursuant to government code section 11126, parentheses A, parentheses one, a personnel matter. Uh, I would ask Gabby, you to stop. Uh, before we do that, don't touch anything. I apologize. Before we do that, we will go to public comment. Is there anybody in the public wishing to comment on item 11A, the closed session discussion about our personnel matters? No. Hearing and seeing no one, uh, we'll close public comment on item 11A. And now, Gabby, if you would not mind stopping the recording and we can excuse all those members not required to be present. Restart the recording. Anyone to admit out there? Not that I can see. I think they're all at the HTC okay. meeting. Okay. Well, then we will uh, read ourselves back into the open session. Um, the board met in closed session pursuant to government code section 11126 parentheses A parentheses 1 to discuss personnel matters. Uh, there is nothing to report. Uh, seeing that it's just us, uh, any commissioner comments before we close out the meeting? All right, thanks very much, Tori, and we'll see you. Um, I don't know if folks need to take a little bit of a bathroom break. Um, I am not the chairperson of that committee uh, uh, or the vice chair, so I don't know if uh, we, we wanna take a little bit of a break before going to HDC or go straight in. Uh, if, if we have a quorum, we'll start, but otherwise we can yeah, take a break. We definitely have a quorum. I just, you know, I'll, I'll defer to Paul. Uh, yeah, let's just, I mean, unless, is there anyone that needs a break? If not, maybe we can get over there and, and get done with that too, because I know there's some people probably over there from HDC. So why don't we just end this one and move over to the other one? All right. Uh, there being no further business, this one's adjourned. Thank you all.